Okay, uh, time is up. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. We are live now. Thanks for joining me. I feel so excited to have all of you here on live. Especially thanks goes to Kendall team for making this webinar happen. Uh, first, uh, let me briefly introduce today's topic and uh, a little bit of words about myself. Uh, as you see from the, uh, you have you have seen from the slides. Today's topic is to tell you how to squeeze the highest photo quality from tiny VR cameras. And today we are going to take Kendall Cookham as an example. And I, I will tell you oh, why and uh, all the technologies and all the skills that you will learn. And my name is Yu Qing. Uh, I'm a, you can see me here. I'm a panorama hobbyist since 2009 and uh, currently I'm a computational photography lover uh, and I have a, a won 2018 Epson Panel Award silver medal uh, in the session of VR 360 so that is, uh, that is a brief introduction of myself and uh, every time you know, every every time when I post uh, the beautiful 360 photos in Facebook, uh, you know, like uh, immersive experience, almost everyone will ask the, the same question again and again. So wh what is a camera? Oh, amazing. How can you do this? Uh, what? How do you do this? That That's impossible. That's amazing. Could you please share your workflow? Mm. Th that is the point of today's presentation. So I will show all of the stuff for you. Uh, in this slides, in this webinar, so that, that that is the reason why we have today's webinar. And my topic today is squeeze the highest photo quality from tiny VR cameras. And before we go to the webinar, uh, well, uh, I have played with many 360 cameras uh, before, and recently m one of my uh, favorite cameras is Kukam, which I will also be the example camera today. But uh, you should never worry about that because because uh, all the technology, all the techniques and skills I share today from shooting to post-production, they can apply to all the 360 cameras you have. And the uh, topic for today is how to squeeze the highest photo quality from tiny VR cameras. Uh, it's it's like a magic, in fact, but uh, it really happened. And I think before we dive deep into the webinar, I would like to share with you some of the uh, great 360 photos with you, all shoot with Kukam. And after this webinar, I bet uh, most of you could also achieve uh, the photos like this high quality and, uh, uh, and even better, I think even better, some of you. Uh, with my slides and with your technology and with your tiny 360 cameras. So now let's uh, go to the, uh, go to here. I will share with, I can see uh, the, 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 the first one is, you can see, uh, a few days ago I was boating on cruising on the river and uh, I took the panorama at the very best moment when my boat dived deep into the water and the very best moment uh, you can see the, the waters, the waves and the beautiful sceneries all around the place uh, I have I have also ever put my camera into the fire so you can see it's all the it's very hot and it really happened this, this is me and uh, next one I can show you is uh, when I was cruising on a boat in Yangtze River in the city of Chongqing, China. You know the the boat is cruising very fast, but with with tiny little VR cameras, we could still capture this very best moment uh, without blur and uh, also in high quality. Yes. Uh, what if we have some 
a big movement, like the two pigeons, two birds. They are flying away, but this very best moment. And also, they were flying in a cage, which we cannot put our DSLR inside the cage. But we can put our tiny VR cameras through the holes, and we could capture uh, the very best moment of the two birds. And I will show you all of you uh, all the technologies I, I use how to do this photo uh, in my uh, workflow session. So it's, it's maybe it's like magic, right? It's like magic, but it's, it's not. It's, it's never, it's not like a, a magic. And, and you see that the pigeon were moving very fast. How can you capture the moment and achieve high quality panoramas? What is the magic? What is that magic, right? That is a key point of today's webinar. I will tear down the magic, reveal the secrets behind the scenes and tell you how to achieve the best moment shot. And more importantly, I will show you my complete workflow hand in hand and step by step. Okay, let's let's dive deep into the webinar. Uh, this is the agenda for today. Uh, what we would what, like want to tell you is uh, basically uh, Raw Plus DNG8 uh, super resolution workflow and and so on. So. First of all, what is RAW Plus? Uh, many of you will ask, what is RAW Plus? The RAW Plus is a smart photo stacking software with reference image. A, fo a smart photo stacking software with reference image. And uh, this on the left, on the left is uh, the intro screen of the software. On the right, it's, it's the icon of the software. So you should get familiar with this magical software. It will help you uh, improve the imaging quality dramatically. Uh, the great features of the, the RAW Plus, Canon RAW Plus, uh, is that uh, it is a photo stacking software. And uh, different from Photoshop, it is a re irregular photo stacking software. It is compatible with most of the cameras and could dramatically reduce noise, especially in low light. At the same time, it could help you increase the dynamic range and without a blur or other artifacts that the normal uh, photo stacking software will have. So that is that, uh, good, that are the great features of Canon RAW Plus. Uh, why? Some of the features might sound weird. so. How could you do that? Why? What is the reason? Next, I will tell you some fundamental principles behind this magical software. Uh, you know, in photo stacking, uh, we, uh, we usually put the averaging algorithm. So, RAW Plus will perform averaging in a photo stack. And the photo stack was operating based on the reference image. And what is the reference image? I will show you later on. And uh, after the pixel level alignment in the photo stack, and your, uh, your software and your, uh, your, your, your cameras could deal with camera movement because of the pixel level alignment and the reference image. At the same time, with average algorithm, uh, it could dramatically reduce the noise and increase the dynamic range. So what is the reference image? In this photo, you can see that uh, the image on the top in the red square this one on the top is the reference image. And the, the file number is limited to 16 images in each stack. And the number 2 to number 8, the, these 7 images, will perform pixel level alignment against the first image. And uh, after the photo averaging algorithm, uh, the reference images, the uh, imaging quality got uh, dramatically improved. So uh, that, that is some of the fundamental principles that behind the Canon RAW Plus. And I will show you the result uh, later on. Uh, to, to, take the, to make the most of the Canon RAW Plus, usually you need to take 8 DNG shots or even more uh, in a sequence. Uh, shoot like a burst or shoot in time lapse or manually. And uh, these 8 DNGs will look like this. And they may look like uh, the same, you, you know, but the noise in different images, the noise is different. 
So when you stack in the eight images together, you will achieve a high quality with a burst of RAW or with a sequence of RAW, usually 8 to 16 frames. You will get a merge with high quality 16-bit new RAW data. And with some fine-tuning parameters with applied to this high quality raw data, you will finally achieve this final high quality pictures uh, with your operations. So that is the very simple workflow uh, behind the Kino Raw Plus and some very fundamental principles of this magical software. Here is some examples you can see this before and after. On the right, on the right is before, on the left is after. You can see I, I shot this image uh, at night with ISO 100. But even with ISO 100, there's noise you can see here. And with the DNG8 shot and uh, the RAW plus uh, denoise, you can see the, the noise is reduced, reduced and the imaging quality is improved. We take a closer look at this. You can, you can compare with uh, uh, left and right. You will see the big improvement. Uh, here is some more examples. Uh, you can see with the help of Canon Raw Plus, it could help you recover more information from the dark. Uh, on the left, you can see is a normal a single DNG shots with a just exposure. There's so much noise in the dark. But on the right, the Raw Plus will help you gain much more details with the same the just exposure and with a higher signal to noise ratio. So the Raw Plus will help you recover more information from the dark. There's a, as another example you can see compared before the the left and the right before and after before and after you can see will help you recover more information from the dark. And what what is the most magical about this uh, software is that it could deal with camera movement or even moving objects. You can see that the people are rushing out to the metro station and uh, with the photo stacking in Photoshop use averaging algorithm. You can see, although the imaging quality got uh, dramatically improved, but the, the leaves, the, the people got blurred and the leaves are, are, bl are blurred. Uh, although we have a high quality picture, but we lose, the, we lose so much details in the people and the, the leaves. But with, with Kendall Raw Plus, let's hold on, hold on, hold a, hold a second, you, you see. With Kendall Raw Plus, you will achieve s such result. Uh, with high quality pictures and at the same time retain all the moving objects. Uh, so watch out, you can take a closer look at this. Now it is a high quality image, but the moving objects are still there and they are crystal clear and sharp. That is, that is magic, right? That is magic. You can see before and after. Before and after. The same high quality, and but with all the moving objects still there. Yeah. So the same technology could also be compatible with consumer level or professional 360 cameras because this is a, a very good way of improving your images, no matter it is a normal shot or 360 shot. So it could be applied to 360 cameras and with so much potential. Here is a, a normal, a single DNG 360 photos. You can see the people there, there's so much noise. And uh, in the dark, there's so much noise. And uh, be careful with the, the leaves, there's so much noise. So this single DNG VR shots, uh, there's noise everywhere. And with the DNG8, with DNG8, we'll talk about this later. With the sequence of D DNG VR shots stacked together, uh, we will achieve the quality of this resolution. Uh, this is before, and it's after. After the, the raw plus, you will achieve a much higher imaging quality here and there. Here is before, and it's after. Yeah, before and after. Here is another before and after, right? Before and after. So if everywhere, every detail of your uh, VR shots got dramatically improved, so the imaging quality, the immersive experience will improve a lot. 
in the final result. Uh, so th that is the first time when I got uh, to know the magic behind the Canora Plus. It's like magic. It's it's weird. It's I feel it, even is is it weird? Is this possible? But uh, it is really it's really happened. It is possible and uh, and it, it it is a free software. It's compatible with all the, the cameras, no matter if it is the 360 cameras or a DSLR, even your cell phone. As long as you can shoot in RAW, right? Yeah, that's the funny faces, but that that's my my feelings. So let's uh, make a summary of RAW Plus. It uh, it is will help you to improve your imaging quality in, in no uh, to get a low noise image, I increase to get high dynamic range. It, it, it works like magic, especially in low light situations, and it even works perfectly well with fast moving subject in your image. So that is magical, and I have already shown you here, right? So next up, uh, I will tell you DNG8. The DNG8 is, uh, yeah, the DNG8 is uh, quite amazing. So to if you want to take the most of Canon Plus, you need a sequence of DNG shots. You need to take a sequence of DNG shot at the highest efficiency, the shortest time. So DNG8 solved this problem. It is a revolutionary way to of taking high quality VR shots. And now uh, only QCAM has these killer features inside the tiny little body. So next I will tell you what is DNG8. So what is DNG8? Uh, to tell more about it, let's dive deep into DNG8. To have a better understand of DNG8, you need to learn the difference between uh, a taking 8 DNG shots and a DNG8 shots. They are totally different. Let me explain. You need to, to know the difference between single DNG and a DNG8. Consider what happened on single DNG shots. You know, normally you, you push the shutter button, but uh, the camera will do lots of stuff for you uh, at backstage. Uh, normally, the camera will uh, finish the exposure and uh, transfer the data to the high-speed RAM. We call it caching. And after you transfer the data uh, from the RAM to the flash or micro SD card, uh, it's saving. So caching and saving is invisible for you. Uh, and the exposure is the exposure time you, you set on your camera. So there are three steps after uh, every single DNG shots. Oh, exposure, caching, and saving. So in, normally, if you want to get uh, uh, eight DNG shots, for example, eight DNG shots, consider what happened if you want to achieve eight DNG shots. You take one by one, exposure, caching, saving, exposure, caching, saving, uh, repeat, repeat again and again, eight times. Right, that will take a lot of time. And uh, what more importantly, that you see that the exposure they got separated by caching and saving. So the exposure nearby got separated by caching and saving. And the caching and saving will take you a, a lot of time normally in your uh, in your sensor. So for a photographer, you know, uh, like us, for a photographer. Uh, normally, what time cost uh, for a photographer to take a sequence of eight DNG shots? The time is uh, eight exposure time, seven caching time, and seven saving time. It is a huge time, huge amount of time. So, and and mo what's more, the 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 nearby exposure was uh, they got separated by caching and uh, saving. Yeah, so it's it's too slow, right? Normally, caching and saving will take you uh, one or two seconds. Normally, two seconds or even more in your camera. Uh, so that's why uh, you push the button, push the shutter button, and uh, it will take you quite an amount of time. So you can take next shot. So it's too slow, and and you know, the exposure got separated. So if there are moving objects, they are fast moving objects. They are running out of your frame. 
So your imaging stacking, your photo stacking will fail, right? It can never make any pixel level alignment because the object is not in every photos. So that's bad for your improvement in photo quality. So not only is too slow, but also it is bad for your photo stacking, which means you cannot improve your imaging quality. So consider what happened on uh, mm, a DNG8 shots. You know DNG8 solved this problem in an uh, elegant, efficient way. You know, exposure location and saving. Let's see what on earth is happening on the line uh, DNG shots. We push one button, push the shutter button, and what happened? You know, it's like this. It's not uh, done one by one, but it's like a pipeline mechanism. It's, it's a pipeline magnet. It makes a, a fully potential of the hardware and the software. They got an integrated design. So it's uh, there's an underlying pipeline mechanism between the eight shots. They got in a par parallel way, right? So time cost for a photographer like you and me, right, is eight times exposure time. Eight, eight times exposure time, right? We skipped every case in the saving time. But at the same time, the camera, the the hardware, software, they work together to help you to finish caching and saving, invisible. So you don't need to care about the caching and saving. You just push the button, and after eight times exposure time, the exposure is already done, which means you can leave. You can leave now, while uh, leave the camera was uh, saving the data to your uh, SD card. That will take quite a lot of time, but your exposure time is it's one by one. They got. They will never got separated with a, a single DNG DNG shot, DNG eight shot. Let's uh, take some examples, right? Consider we have one second exposure, one second caching, one second saving. You know, occasion and saving time are normally constant in your hardware. And and if your exposure time is faster, like uh, 0 0.25 seconds, now the time cost for you is eight time. 0 0.25, uh, which is two seconds. Let's take it faster. Uh, 0 0.1 second. Now we have uh, 0 0.8 seconds in to in total, so which will save you quite amount of time uh, to get a sequence of DNG shots, and only with one click on the shutter button, without click click eight times, or or or, or, or trigger the time lapse, right? So the DNG8 solve the problems of getting a sequence of DNG shots in a very elegant way. So it is very, very fast because you only need eight explorer time sequentially. And uh, although the, the subject is moving between frames, but you know the uh, explorer was done one by one they, in a continuous way. So the movement for the object is limited, which is, which can be compensated in Candle Raw Plus uh, with pixel level alignment and the reference imaging technology. So it's great for stacking, even if you were shooting a faster moving object, like you were cruising on a boat or you're shooting uh, two birds uh, that, that are flying very fast. You know, that is the trick here. So we, only some some uh, some sort of uh, photos could only be achieved with DNG8 mode, but with not with any other mode right now. So that is the magic which underlie in inside the DNG8. I hope you could understand. So um, which one should you choose? You know, uh, if you want the the efficient, most efficient way to get a sequence of DNG shots, DNG8 is. Uh, at the right at the moment is definitely the best choice. But uh, uh, if you use other cameras, you could also achieve a sequence DNG shot with the time lapse mode. You know, time lapse. You can choose JPEG plus DNG in time lapse mode. But we ha you have uh, a quite a lot of interval time plus caching and saving. And also, you can uh, push the shutter button eight times, one by one. Yes. So there are. Uh, totally uh, three ways of achieving a sequence of DNG shots. So 
among all of them, DNG8 is the best. Inevitably, inevitably, it is the best. So how to shoot in DNG8? This is very, uh, it's very, very, very simple. You know, uh, take QCAM as an example. You you just choose the DNG8 mode, DNG8 mode in the QCAM app, and and the, the this this white shutter button. You push the button, shutter button, and all the pipeline is done. You don't have to worry anything else. Push the but shutter button, and after eight explore time, it's it's over. It's it's done, right? It's finished. Here I have um, a screenshot, a screenshot video for you uh, to uh, to show you how to switch to DNG eight and how to shoot in DNG eight. Here we are now in the cool camera. Mm, you can scroll left and right to switch to the DNG eight mode. You can see here, switch to this mode and uh, choose menu settings. ISO 100, and uh, you can see the live view is exactly what you will have in the final image. And you can switch to the uh, you, you can switch to DNG8 mode. And uh, what, what fascinates me most uh, is that uh, so uh, only in DNG8 mode, the, is the, the live preview is precisely uh, what you will get. You so exactly the live preview, what, what, what you see is what you get. So that is the, so the another is exactly good feature uh, inside the Canon Cool Cam. So that is the magic of DNG8. And that is how you should take DNG shots uh, with Cool Cam app. You see, uh, what what do you see is what you get. What you see is what you get in DNG mo DNG8 mode with long exposure, right? So let's continue our webinar. So what sh you should do before shooting DNG8? You know, shooting in DNG8 is is super easy. You push the the, <laughs> the shutter button and it's done. But uh, to achieve a high quality photos and a great for even a great photos you need to do lots of pre preparations before shooting in DNG8. Let me explain. Uh, so if possible, always shoot at uh, ISO 100, especially in low light situations, if you want to get the highest uh, imaging quality and uh, set the manual exposure uh, as quickly as possible because sometimes the time time matters. And as we have mentioned before, what you see is what you get in the DNG8 mode, so live preview is precisely what you will achieve after you take a DNG8 shots. You don't have to switch to JPEG mode to take shots, preview, uh, adjusting, and uh, shoot again. No. It's, you don't have to do that because in the live preview, it's exactly what you will have. So if you are satisfied with your uh, live preview, just push the button and you, you, you are done. And you should be careful with the stitching line, uh, especially in, in some the tiny the two lenses, double lenses, the VR cameras. Be careful with the stitching line. Never put the, the people in the stitching line because the closer you are at, uh, <laughs> near, near the stitching line, you will have some issues uh, in the stitching. And uh, uh, always keep your camera stable, especially in low light, because in low light, you need long time exposure. And if you want to achieve a crystal clear and sharp images, you have to keep your camera super stable. Yeah. And sometimes, I, I recommend you you hide yourself. You, if you want to give your audience, your viewer, the best, the best immersive experience, so the the camera, the gear, the photographer should be invisible. You should hide yourself, your gear, your shadows. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I remember that Darren Lacey takes some photos. You, they hide yourself, but he didn't hide his shadows. Hiding your shadows is is very important. It's also very important to hide everything that is not related with your photos, in order to give your viewer, your audience, the best immersive experience. That is the point. And you can see my photos. I always hide myself and all of my gears, my shadows, every artifacts that we have in in before I take the photos. And what you should do after shooting DNG? Because shooting DNG is super easy, and make preparations are not that hard. And there's something that you should do after shooting DNG. And currently, 
and if you take the shooter DNG8, you you first thing you should do is to calm down because in the cool cam app in the cell phone, uh, not not to say the Android and iPhone, the DNG files are invisible. You you can never uh, review the photos and uh, once you get the shot. And you, what you should do is get a color reader and uh, copy the DNG sequence to your PC uh, and uh, import to Canon RAW Plus and choose the one as the best as a reference image and hit the render button and you could work like me, get a cup of coffee. You know, cu cup of coffee. After you, you have uh, the cup of coffee, then the RAW Plus will help you to render all the files for you. So th th that is the, all the stuff about DNG8. So let's take uh, an example, take it easy. Uh, this is our photography workflow. So what is the DNG8 uh, work harmoniously with RAW Plus is that it will give you the head start, the head start in the photography workflow. So it's not the, the final line of the uh, photography workflow. It is just a starting, starting point to so DNG8 works together with the raw plus uh, will give you uh, the best the best the head start in the photography workflow and you have to more f further fine tuning on your uh, high quality uh, DNG files uh, here's an example of my uh, fine tuning Adobe Camera Raw or any other uh, developing software you just uh, play with the sliders uh, take back and forth until you are satisfied with your result, right? Yeah, so the topic uh, that we have already uh, tell you what is RAW plus, what is DNG8, and how the DNG8 could work harmoniously with the RAW plus, right? Yeah, next one. You know, uh, today, today, uh, the, the Canon Kukam just released a very new features they call it the super resolution. It released today, and uh, this feature is works great for me, and uh, it will help you to boost your imaging quality once again uh, with the help of machine learning or the artificial intelligence. Because uh, you you have already boosted your imaging quality with the RAW Plus and the DNG8. Now, you with super resolution algorithm, you can boost your imaging quality once again with the help of AI. What is a super resolution? Let's take it simple. A super resolution will help to make your image look crystal clear and uh, crystal sharp based on machine learning algorithm. It will help you to achieve a high res, high res image from a low res image. So it's it's like a, a function that's carried uh, from the low res to the high res. So it will boost your imaging quality once again. And uh, to tell you more about it, the super resolution is not uh, like uh, the, the BQ, BQ, BQ or bilinear algorithm that we just uh, jam in more pixels of your image. Super resolution is not just uh, jam in more pixels, but it, it will at the same time uh, recover more high frequency information from the low frequency information. So not only will you achieve a high res image from a low res image, but at the same time, uh, you will recover more details from the original photos. So your imaging quality uh, got improved at the area of high frequency level. Yeah, I will show you some before and after comparison. Yeah. So this is before I was taking uh, a cave. It's before and uh, it's after. You can see in the high frequency it got uh, much clearer uh, and I, I will uh, share my slide I will share my slide with you and uh, you can compare at pixel level yeah, at the pixel level by yourself yeah this, this is before this is before and uh, this after right this is before is after. Uh, 
Yes, it's before and after. This is we take a closer look at this. It this is before, and it's after. Uh, you can see this got uh, the image quality got dramatically improved, right? Here's before and after. Before, after. We take a very closer the pixel level. You can see the that's the difference. This is before and after. Before and after. Uh, if you can't see the difference, I will give the the raw image for you, and you can compare by yourself. So next, I will show the complete workflow uh, behind the scenes. Now I will switch back to uh, my my PC and show you the complete workflow of my my in my VR photography. Here, okay. I will switch back to my PC. At uh, here, yeah. Now you can see it is, is my uh, my PC. Uh, here, you can see uh, when you're shooting DNG8, we we take took only one example because the time is limited for us. Uh, here, you can see it is uh, a sequence of eight DNG shots in in the on the cool cam on the the burst DNG8 mode. Burst shot. You can see the, the the birds are flying, right? And we have very very fast shutter speed. Now, now we can just uh, select one of the photos and uh, dire send directly to the Canon Raw Plus, and it will say auto import files from the same shot. You can click on confirm, and it will uh, automatically recognize the, the sequence of DNG8 shots. And uh, take it to the imaging stack, right? Oh, sorry. Now drag and drop to the row plus. Click on confirm, right? And uh, now the number one imaging is a reference image. But uh, you can see, uh, I I'm I'm not satisfied with the number one image because this this the bird this this one has already. Landed, it's, it's it is landed, and it's, it's still flying. They are not that beautiful, right? And uh, there's noise. You can see. Take a closer look at this. So, in in my opinion, uh, the number seven. You can see number seven. This bird is perfect, while uh, the this one is not that perfect. Uh, and the number six, and the number five, number eight, right? And the number eight. Uh, number eight. This this bird is perfect, while this one uh, this not perfect, and this bird is perfect. Uh, so we can make the photo stack once again on the same sequence, right? I can drag it again, and this time we can click on cancel. So we can generate a uh, two high quality DNG shots from a uh, one DNG eight mode, a uh, one DNG eight. Uh, now we can select the as we have mentioned uh, one of the reference image is the number eight and the other reference image is the number seven so uh, this one was drag and drop to the top and number eight is the reference image the so next one we can drag and drop the number seven to the top and now the number seven was set as a reference image and we click on render it will help us render a high quality a 60 bit dng shots a dng shots and here i have already uh, rendered for you to save some time a kd raw you can see that right here you can see this one this one right this one this one um this you can see the bit depth is 16 now and uh, the noise got re dramatically reduced uh, you can compare in more detail of this shots, you can uh, see here, especially in low light, right? Here is one, and you can see the 
this noise, the noise uh, is gone, and uh, with some fine tuning uh, in Adobe Camera Raw, we can bring back much more details uh, with the help of uh, digital developing uh, in the Adobe Camera Raw. And this is the single DNG shot. We can take a closer look at this. Um, there's the noise in the on, on the birds. You can see clearly. And this one, I have already done some fine tuning stuff. Uh, we can now we can set on default, default, and you can see it um, more clearly. And this the, the noise got dramatically reduced. And on this one, uh, yeah, there's, there's noise everywhere. Although I have shot uh, at ISO 100 because the sensor is so small. Ah, uh, yeah, here you can see. And what <laughs> what is the magic is that the bird is still there, and at the same time, this bird is also the noise of the bird is also got reduced. Compare with uh, here, we can compare with this one. Yeah. This one, the birds, and this one. Yeah, right? This one, and this one. You can see the difference. Right? Before, after. Before, after. Right? The bird is still there, but the noise is removed, and with with some uh, uh, very simple, uh, with very very simple fine tuning, uh, select an auto. You can play with your sliders uh, as long as you want, and you can even make preset as yourself. And like a cool cam, I have a cool cam preset, I have a GoPro preset, I have everything, and uh, you can develop this image and and once you have done this one you can you can select and uh, synchronize and then you still click on save images and you can save as the jpeg or the the t files uh, in this case in this case uh, i will i will uh, have in the photoshop i will blend i will blend the, the two photos together uh, to get a, a better shot but i i, I will skip this uh, directly to the the Kukam, in the Kukam studio. Next time, uh, after the uh, fine tuning on the shots, we we dive into the the stitching part, right? Here's the stitching part. Yes, in the Kukam studio, we can uh, stitch stitch that photo. Hmm. Now, now drag and drop this photo here directly. In the latest version of Kukam Studio, right? And you can uh, correct the horizon here. And always check, uh, please, in, in English, always check color correction on and off to choose the best one that uh, meet your standard. In this case, you can see when I click on color correction, I can see clearly there's a color difference here, in this place, here. When I, I click on off, Maybe the color is 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 more uh, like what I want, and uh, I always put the interesting part at the center of my image, and uh, click on Add to Queue. Next, I will show you what what that's where the super resolution works, and in the resolution part, normally you have 4K resolution. Now I click on this, you can see here, uh, eight eight K with SR. Click on 8K SR. The format you can click on JPEG or PNG. Uh, uh, you can get a, a bigger file with PNG. But th this this demonstration will uh, output in JPEG files. And now we you can generate uh, 8K JPEG files directly from the Kukam Studio. It's the latest uh, version of the uh, Kukam Studio. It's uh, <coughs> it's uh, it's 1.4 maybe. It just uh, released today, and uh, render selected. And after uh, you know, after a period of time, you you have plenty of time to enjoy another drip of coffee. And uh, usually, if you select on super resolution, it might be slower than the normal resolution because there are some artificial intelligence algorithms running behind back at the backstage. Yeah, here, 
uh, it's already done and to click on confirm uh, on confirm and uh, now we have in the folder of kd output we have uh, this 8k 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 photos here right 8k we just render it this is what I rendered a few days before. This is this the, the photos we generate, 8K, and uh, this photo, first we combine DNG8 with the raw plus to reduce the noise, and uh, the second step, we apply the super resolution algorithm to the final output, and to boost the pixel, and at the same times, we retain more details. From the image, so the image will will also look sharp. It will not look blur like uh, uh, you do normal resize uh, up uh, the upscale. But th in this way, we upscale the image, but the image is still sharp. It have even more detail compared with the uh, the normal shot. And next, with some with the help of the uh, panorama viewer, you can uh, preview the panorama effect. Uh, at your this time, I use FSP viewer because this is the panorama viewer that support color management, and you can see your your images after the Cookham Studio, and that is not the the final stage stage of the photography workflow because you could still apply some more even more fine tuning on this image. And make it more vivid, uh, with more sharpness, uh, more details, even with some advanced uh, Photoshop tricks. Now that's not included in this webinar because the time is limited. But uh, I will tell you that you can uh, get even more uh, post processing on this panorama image and to make it more vivid. Uh, and after that, you can upload to Facebook and share with your friends. But uh, the Facebook would only recognize the the photos that with uh, active files. That uh, uh, here I you I will use the active fixer uh, to help you fix the image and to add some uh, metadata uh, add some metadata to this uh, this the the, uh, the the panorama projection metadata. This is equirectangular, and uh, you drag and drop the image to the active fixer and add click on add metadata. And the software will will help you to add the metadata automatically. And uh, after that, you could upload this one, but not this one. This one directly to Facebook, and uh, that is the end of the workflow. Right. So here is a complete workflow of my uh, behind my photos. And uh, I will switch back to my slides. Here, yes, I have already shown you my uh, my workflow, and uh, is the everything, every tricks, magic and tricks behind the scenes. We took a very short period of time because uh, we we cannot uh, do all the steps uh, very precisely. But I will show you. I have al already show you all the steps uh, behind my uh, my uh, 360 photos. Uh, next. To make a summary of the workflow here, to make it as simple as follows. So what we have uh, uh, see is, is that we can uh, make a summary as follows. So first, you shoot in DNG8 mode. If you don't have uh, a cool cam or some, you have other cameras, you can shoot in time lapse or you can shoot manually. And uh, next, you put the sequence of DNG shot in the photo stacking software, the Candle Raw Plus. And always remember to choose the right image as a reference image. Third, with some fine tuning after you output with uh, the KD RAW, or I, I, I always call it KD RAW, it's generated by the Canon RAW Plus. In fact, it is a DNG 16B DNG image. And you should always retain all the exif files because once you lose the exif files at the output, th this image might not be recognized by, by your studio software. And uh, after that, you stitch the image in the stitching software uh, with super resolution to make the highest photo quality and uh, make even more fine tunings on the final output image. And at the last stage, you, you use the active fixer. I always use this magic software to fix the metadata and post your final shot 
on Facebook. So this is the, the basic workflow behind every one of my shots. Every shot you see on Facebook, you see, wow, they are always generated via this very simple workflow. But it, it seems like a, a magic, but there's no magic at all here. There's no magic. I will tell you, there's no no magic at all. But this uh, workflow, you sh you need you need patience. You need a step by step. You need precisely uh, tuning every pixel in your image, and you should always keep practicing again and again with trials and errors. So finally, I think you will achieve much better photos than me at, a, at a, in the near future after this webinar. So always patience and uh, keep practicing, practicing, training yourself hard. There's no magic, there's no magic, right? That is uh, on my total workflow here. Uh, finally, let's make some uh, brief summary of this webinar because we have already have uh, 15 minutes till now, right? It's quite a, a lot of time. So all the all the magic I show you, uh, RAW Plus, the DNG8, or the super resolution, the complete workflow, the all together, how they work harmoniously together. The DNG8 combined with RAW Plus and output with super resolution with even more fine tunings in the photography workflow and finally you achieve that very best immersive shots and once you share with your friends uh, you, you will have a lots of happiness right you know happiness you feel really happy uh, when you share it with your photos to also make a, a brief summary of this webinar so this till the end of this webinar let's make a brief summary and make some uh, uh overview in for the future so all the tricks all the magic I have shown you today uh, is about computational photography and I, as I have shown you that I, I am a computational photography lover so the the raw plus uh, the DNG8 uh, the super resolution they are all part of the computational photography and the, the, the even the VR photography virtual reality photography 360 photography is also part of computational photography so in the area of uh, computational photography uh, you should uh, learn much more than before. You should master all the... The more you, you master the computational photography tricks, the more you will achieve with your a camera. Although it is just a tiny little VR cameras, but we can achieve amazing result uh, with the help of computational photography. Apart from, uh, apart from the RAW Plus, the DNG8, uh, the super resolution, uh, there's some much more tricks you could apply uh, such as the HDR the high dynamic range blending anti ghost uh, the machine learning uh, and if you if you are familiar with Photoshop there's uh, all even a uh, frequency separation technique uh, luminosity mask technique that is most like a magic in Photoshop so all this you, you you have so much to learn to improve yourself in the area of computational photography so maybe you should uh, you should not uh, uh, running after the the giant cameras, you know the giant cameras is super strong and super uh, stable, but at the same time, tiny little 360 VR cameras is also very capable of delivering amazing shots, especially uh, at this moment uh, with the Plus, DNG, and uh, super resolution. And no matter what camera you use, on Kukam, uh, any other cameras, and I have already shown you the complete workflow. So, you, all of us, all of us could achieve amazing result with the help of computational photography tricks. So, yeah. So that is the point of today's webinar. So it's not uh, just to show you the magic, but it also I'm calling to you that you should make the most of your cameras you already have. You already have. You don't. You don't have to buy lots of cameras, but you should make the most of your cameras in the area of computational photography. So, uh, yes, th that's all of the today's webinar. And uh, next, we have, have uh, enter another session, the Q and A sessions. And uh, thanks for all of you here uh, to join the lives. And I'm really happy, and also special thanks for the Kendall team to make this webinar happen and to make this, this uh, all the amazing technologies in, uh, for the computational photography. 
So that's all for the webinar. Uh, next, we have some times for questions and answers. That's all for the tutorial or the webinar. Thanks a lot. Any question? So I can uh, take some times, take some time to answer your questions. And to, we we should uh, learn more about this. I think because it's definitely a new way of of taking shots, especially uh, VR shots. Uh, here's a question from Jiang Xin Li: Is it mean cannot work for night shot? It is because the night side need exposure more time, for example, for taking Milky Way, the single need to expose at least 30 seconds. How can you take eight photos with enough light to take? Uh, here, for the, you can, you can take uh, a point, uh, take Milky Way with point and shoot camera because they have very giant aperture, like f1.8 or f2.0, 2.2, they are very, a big aperture so and with a little bit higher ISO maybe ISO 200 or 400 or even uh, 1600 1600 maybe you don't have to take uh, a 30 second shot and uh, uh, e even if you take 30 second shot I, I think the Milky Way is not moving that fast so you should uh, take uh, experiment and take experiment and uh, to see what the result will be because I have never tried to shoot the Milky Way. If I have ever tried this uh, subject, I will share my result with you. And uh, I, I, I suggest you take the shot. I think it is possible to take eight, eight photos. And uh, if it is not possible to take eight photos, you can take less, uh, four, five, six, seven. You can also achieve very good result, but at least, at least more than four, more than 40 inch shots. The more the better. I hope it is, is helpful. Is, it is help you d to the answers. Uh, well, good. Any other questions? Ah. I find an example how the Roplas help the Milky Way. And, and you can also combine the Roplas with your very strong DLSR. You, you don't have always use tiny VR cameras. You can use also use very giant full frame cameras combined with RAW Plus. That's that's okay. It's okay. I hope it helps. And you should take experiment by yourself and see the result, final result. And if every any other body have ever uh, ever had the experience, please share with Johnson Lee. I think it is possible. Because, but I have never tried it. Question from Data Home. How often your photos did you hide yourself? And how often did you ease yourself in post? Ah, uh, here. Uh, question from How often in your photos did you hide yourself? Almost every photo I will hide myself. I use uh, the a tripod, the selfie stick. Uh, Wi-Fi remote control, so that uh, although I'm I I am invisible, but I can still um, manage to control every parameter of my uh, VR cameras. So I will hide on myself in every shot. But uh, if I was I will I will enjoy my meal with my friends, and I was uh, one of the subject in my photo, I, I will not hide myself. But I will hide the camera and the shadow of the camera. And I will ease them in Photoshop. And in the latest version of Photoshop CC, you have interactive uh, editing, like a uh, immersive way. You can easily ease out. Just uh, try yourself. I hope it can help. How often did you ease? How often did you ease yourself? Not only you should ease yourself, but you should also ease every equipment and their shadows. From Dan Lizzy, is it best to? Tweak the photo in circle mode or unwrapped. Is it best to tweak photos in circle mode or unwrapped? Could, could you 
explain what what is in circle mode on wrapped? You mean the 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 double fisheye lenses, a double fisheye image, or the equirectangular images? Darius, could you repeat your your questions in more detail? Is it best to tweak the photo in circle mode or unwrapped? And and uh, as I have shown in my workflow, I will uh, perform fine tuning bones on bones on the the the, the double fisheye image and also the final unwrapped version. Lean flapper. Lean Flapper has a question. Where were you around the cage? How did you hide yourself since you were holding the camera? Ah, uh, here. Here, I can, uh, for here, I, I will show you Lean, lean Flapper here. Lean Flapper here. here. This, this is for you. As I can show you the photos here. Here. I was hiding here. You can see there is a, a wooden panel here. I was hiding behind this this wooden panel, and and the the cool cam was was here was here in in this. If you if you take a closer look at, you can see there lose some even quality on the edge of the fish eye, and uh, and the the only artifacts is here. You can uh, oh oh sorry. Ah uh, sorry. Here. Here's for Lean Flapper, Lean Flapper. This this one this one. I put my uh, cameras. I was standing behind this wooden panel, this wooden panel, and uh, I was uh, putting my my cool cam through this this this, this pole. You can see I I lose some image quality here because it's on the edge of the circle, and uh, here yeah, it's it's easy, it's easy, and. Uh, any other questions? Can answer as many questions as you have. Uh, and the uh, link wrapper. Also, you can also use Hanging Stitch software to take a uh, two three six and mask yourself. Yes, you are definitely right, uh, Anthony Lim. Yeah, but it it will make your workflow a little bit uh, more complex. Uh, it is it is possible in fact and if you can you cannot you you really can't hide yourself you can take double shots at a different orientation and mask yourself in photoshop that sort of advanced photography tricks that's not uh, for everyone but some for some uh, advanced photoshop users from zeko solik where were you around a cage Yes, I I think I have already answered this question for Lean Frappier. The camera was mounted on the C. Can't see the pictures. You can see. Riva Thomas, what? How to make uh, disappearing tripod footprint? Footprint. Ah, here. Uh, it's a. Uh, uh, I will send the link for you. Uh, in the, you can use the content aware view in Photoshop uh, in the interactive editing environment in Photoshop. Just like a normal photo, you make a, a circle around the tripod and uh, press Shift F5, select the content aware, and, uh, and uh, pu push the Enter button, and it's gone. You can try yourself. And I, I, if you need some tutorial, I will send you more tutorial for the Photoshop. So it is very simple photograph, pho Photoshop trick for disappearing the tripod footprint. And yes, there's another very good software called uh, Touch Retouch. It is, it is an Android version and iOS version. It, and in the latest version of uh, Touch Retouch, it has interactive uh, patching tool. It will also uh, patch make a nadir patch i think you, you mean nadir patch nadir patch is a, a classic problem in panoramic photography you can make an easy nadir patch on your cell phone with the help of uh, touch retouch i can touch 
touch, retouch. Did anyone ever trip over your camera model? I mean, especially in a big city. Many people walk by after we hide ourselves. What was the range of distance in the app? The range of distance is the range of Wi-Fi remote control, usually within 10 meters. Within 10 meters. Data home. Did anyone ever trip over your... Yeah. I always uh, travel with uh, a monopod and a camera. Uh, normal, you can see, a uh, selfie stick selfie stick uh, cameras and uh, uh, a mini tripod uh, especially in big city many people walking okay, so what was the range distance of the app 10 meters within 10 meters can we take different exposure PNG photos and change each image to the same numbers the same in DNG then render in raw plus um, I have never tried it but I think Maybe you want to take advantage of the bracket exposure of some other cameras and uh, make full stack in RAW+. Uh, you can make an experiment, but uh, uh, theoretically, all the photos in the RAW+ should be on the same exposure time because only on the same exposure time, uh, very the same settings, the sensor will we have uh, the same res re response. That is. Theoretically, uh, in a mathematical world, you will uh, denoise for have the best denoise result. But I have never tried a uh, different uh, exposure photos. But uh, the raw plus will does not support the PNG. I, I think you uh, misspell. It's DNG, not PNG. Well, I, I recommend you use the same exposure because theoretically, it is theoretically right. And you see that we have full manual mode for night mode, but no raw files. Yeah. Yes, but uh, for Johnson Lee, but Z1, Z1 has raw format. Uh, also, Lee, can we take different exposure PNG? Yeah, I have already answered your, your this question. You should try yourself, but I have never tried. And it's not PNG. It's... Uh, PNG shots, not PNG. Darren Lacey, what memory card do you use? Uh, I use the the fastest card, maybe the SanDisk Extreme Pro, uh, sixty-four gigabyte. SanDisk Extreme Pro, sixty sixty-four gigabyte. But if you will always take photos. Uh, you might not always should always choose the fastest car, but you want to uh, take uh, uh, 4K shots or videos. You need the car as quick, uh, the reading and the, the writing speed as quickly as possible. But you will, if you are taking photos, you don't have to choose the fastest car. I think, uh, but I, I, I always choose the, the fastest car, uh, considering its uh, speed, uh, reliability. Uh, yeah. And my size is, I have two. I have two 64 gigabytes, and one one is for backup. So always have plan B when you are shooting outside because you you should never miss any shots. That's very pre precious in your life. Always have plan B. Corey Corey Schubert, when I save my DNG plus eight files out of RAW plus after working it on bridge. And I have saved all the metadata, the JPEG files. Yeah, for Corey, uh, for Corey Schubert, J JPEG files. I think this is this is very tricky. I think I should uh, push the the the, the Coolcam team that um, the JPEG JPEG files not supported, but the JPEG file is supported. But uh, <laughs> the JPEG is supported. It's weird. I think it's a little bit weird. Yeah, you should rename. You should rename. Rename it to the J JPG, and uh, it, it will work. It, it will not work for JPEG, but for JPG, it will work.
any other questions? I hope it helps. Now you can enjoy a good night's sleep. Yeah, I, I would like to answer the questions and uh, take a sleep. It doesn't, doesn't matter. So t yes, Darren Lisi is right. The TIF is not support, but TIFF is support. This is weird. Any other questions? Thanks for everyone. We will email the PPT later so you can review it again. If you have any other questions, please leave in the comment area. We will answer it later. Yeah. So thanks, thanks everybody for uh, for coming to the, this webinar, and uh, for more of the problem questions, we can answer it uh, later. And uh, mm, send to the public. Randy Kosick, do you have any editing recommendations for 360 video? Uh, honestly speaking, I'm not a 360 video expert. So I highly recommend you ask this question to 360 video expert because I'm not so good at 360 video, honestly speaking. I'm very sorry for this question. Darren Lacey, use the tripod to find a better hiding place. Thank you, thank you, Hips. Thanks, thanks everybody, thanks everybody. I hope I hope it is helpful, and I hope everybody could uh, uh, could take the advantage of Raw Plus DNG the super resolution, and even every one of your of your VR cameras. And uh, our goal is to take great shots and share it with everybody, right? Yeah. To take the most of your cameras, and to take the most of the computational photography. Do you have a similar workflow for three D? Um, if you were shooting VR one hundred and eighty photos, you can also apply the RAW Plus DNG eight and the SuperRes. And I have I have already posted some uh, 3D photos on Facebook. You can search, search, and you will you will find uh, my uh, my result. Thank you, chap. Will this video be available for later viewing? Thanks for this webinar. Very helpful. Ah, of course. Ah, this for you, Lin Fab here. This I, I was uh, recording the whole webinars besides Q and A sessions, and uh, I will uh, help. Uh, I will send to the to the the link to the Facebook or YouTube, so that you can watch it. Again and again, again and again. I, I hope you can watch it again and again with my slides, and you will find it is really magical. Yes, for sharing 3D photos in full effect in VR, sign up. On a side note, why Android can upload? Ah, okay. So that's all for today's webinar and Q and A sessions. And uh, thanks again, thanks again. And uh, we will post the webinar online later on. Thanks everybody. Uh, bye.